Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to determine the winner of an election using the ranked choice method based on a preference summary, which we were given here. It's important to remember that a ranked choice method is also called instant runoff voting because the ranked ballots are used to determine who the winner of a runoff election would be in the event that no one candidate achieves a majority. But you don't have to hold separate runoff elections. It's all done instantly thanks to each voter providing a complete ranking of all of the candidates. Now, I actually like to work these problems on a computer rather than on paper, just because it's easier to copy and paste the entire preference summary and work with it that way rather than to write it all down on paper. So here I've taken my preference summary, added a column to the right for the total points for each candidate, and I put a couple of blank copies in here to get me started. Let's see what happens. So in each round, all that matters is who gets first place. So for example, when we're calculating the points for round one, when we look at option A, option A got first place on the first ballot variation and first place on the third ballot variation. Since there were 12 of the first ballot variation, that means that were 12 voters in that column that ranked A as their first choice and there were 13 in that third ballot variation, A gets 12 plus 13 equals 25 points in the first round. Now let's look at option B. Option B got first place on this last ballot variation here, which 10 voters had. So we're going to have 10 points for option B. Now let's look at option C. Option C had no first place rankings, so option C gets zero points. Now we're gonna look at option D. Option D had one first place ranking here in the second column, which had 15 voters. So option D gets 15 points. Okay, now if one of the candidates has a majority of the points, then we're done. So how do we know if a candidate had a majority of the votes? Well, the number of ballots is the number of votes. So the total number of votes is going to be 12 plus 15 plus 13 plus 10, which is 50 votes. So a majority would be half of 50 plus one. We're gonna round up to half of 50 would be 25, but we need to be higher than that. So 26 would be a majority. None of our options have 26 votes. A came very close, it has 25, but it doesn't have 26. So what we do in that case for ranked choice method voting is we would eliminate the candidate with the fewest votes, which in this case is option C, which had no first place vote. So option C is out of the running. Now, when we do that, we have to renumber the votes for the remaining options. I'm going to cross off option C here and now looking at the first ballot variation, A had first place, B had second, and D had fourth, but now there are only three candidates. So it's going to be A in first, B in second, D in third. Similarly, in the next column with the 15 ballots, um, option D is still in first place, but we've eliminated the second place candidate. So now option B, instead of being third, is moved up to second, and option A is moved up to third. In the next column, we have first place for option A. It would have been third place for option B, but C was eliminated who had second place. So option B has moved up to second and option D has moved up to third. And finally, in the last column, B got first place. Again, the second place candidate C was eliminated. So now instead of getting third place, option A moves up to second place and option D that had fourth is up to third. Now we're going to use these revised rankings and we're going to again give each candidate points for their first place. Option A still has first place 12 and first place 13 ballots, so 25 altogether. Option B now has still just one first place result, which is 10. And option D has one first place result, which is 
15. Again, nobody has 26, nobody has a majority, so we have to eliminate the next lowest candidate, which is candidate B. So I'm gonna cross off B here, and I'm also gonna cross off B and C down here so I don't accidentally think I'm supposed to use them. And now we're down to option A and option D, but we have to adjust their rankings. So option A had first place and option D third, but that now moves up to second. Um, in the next column, option D had first place and now option A has second. In the third column, option A has first place and option D has second. And in the last column, option A has second place, which is now moved up to first, and option D then is second. So let's see what the final score would be here. So option A now has 12 ballots in, first, in the first column. Then in the third column, 13 ballots where the, it's ranked first, and then in the last column, 10. So that's gonna be 35. Whereas option D still only has 15 ballots where it's ranked first. So the winner would be option A. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. You can also subscribe to Miss Hearn Mathematics on YouTube to see more math videos, share the video with a friend, or visit MissHearnMath.com to check out some free specialty calculators for voting methods.